Welcome everyone to this mixup tutorial. Today we're talking about webhook commands and how you can leverage them within your mixup instance to interact with other external online services that mixup doesn't currently interact with. Before we get started, we just want to take a quick moment to thank our Patreon patrons. Uh, they're the ones who help sponsor these videos for us to go out there for everyone to enjoy. So just as a side note, once again, thank you to our Patreon patrons. We appreciate what you're doing. It's completely optional, but it is still a thankful thing all the same. So to get started, what are webhooks? Uh, webhooks as a general thing are a form of communication that can be used between online services. In the case of mix it up, a webhook is a command that you can set up such that an external online service can notify mix it up of when something happens and it will then go down and trigger that command for you. You can think of it somewhat similar to the way an event command works from a high level concept. You have events for stuff like when someone donates to you from an external service, or if you use stream loots, when a stream loots card is triggered on your channel. A webhook is kind of, of a similar concept, but rather than mix up having all that logic baked in and done for you, webhooks provide a little more flexibility for services we might not interact with currently or be able to, and then you can customize it to work however you want. To get started using webhooks, you can open up the main menu here and mix it up and scroll down to the bottom right under services and select webhooks. On this page, you'll be able to add up to five customized webhooks just for you. To add them, simply click on the add webhook button down here and it will generate a customized webhook command for you. Now this doesn't do anything by itself right now, but this is at least the starting jump point for you to be able to interact with a webhook service. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leverage eventually this copy URL button to generate a URL that the webhook service will call when something happens. When they call that URL, it's going to hit a special set of servers that Mixup has dedicated, which will then bounce down the command to you to then trigger whatever command you would like to make by clicking this add command button right here. So to get started, we're gonna do a very, very simple example of a webhook interaction by using a site known as IFTTT, which is if then, then this. It's a wide open service that allows you to create, customize, do this thing when this happens service. And as part of that, those can have webhooks be called. So let's go look at a quick example of that. So IFTTT, as we mentioned, is a website that allows you to set up triggers for external services to then have it do other actions afterwards. And we can have one of those be a webhook that'll communicate to your mixup instance. Now, what you can do, kind of sky is the limit with IFTTT, but we're going to show you a very basic example of how you can use a webhook in Mix It Up to be able to trigger when something happens from an external service. So to get started, we're going to go here and create a very simple if then then this. And let's go here and most likely we'll do something like, let's see here. So as you can see, there's a lot of services through here. You can scroll, scroll, scroll to your heart's content. Um, we're going to try to do one for Twitter. Let's do one for Twitter here. So you can actually scroll all the way to the top here. You can search for Twitter. And we're just gonna do one here that uh, this trigger fires every time you post a new tweet. So we'll have this hooked up to a Twitter account that fires so that when we send a tweet out, it's going to do something within our mix it up instance here. So we do new tweet by you and you have an account you can associate with it. So this is my personal account here. And we're just gonna have a trigger set up to go when I send a tweet from this account. So we're gonna create the trigger and then when we get to the then that, this is the part where it's going to do something after that happens. And this is where we interact with our webhook. So we go to then that, and then we're gonna search for webhook here, and we're gonna create ourselves a new webhook. We're gonna use this make a web request option to be able to do this here. And now we need to actually fill out the information here for how to make it use a webhook with our interaction. Let's go through what steps we need to get this going. So first things first, we're gonna head back into mix it up before we do anything else. And we're gonna do that copy URL button we had over here to pull out the URL for our webhook. So we click that and that's gonna save our URL. We're gonna go back to IFTTT with that. Now that we're back in IFTTT, we're gonna take that URL and we're going to paste it in here. Now this URL, as you can see here, has a webhook for our ID that we have associated with here and it has a secret associated with it. Now, what's very important is that you do not share out this webhook URL with anybody else because anyone who has this can trigger your webhook commands. So it's important you keep this secret. It's not necessarily 
something super, super bad if it gets out, because you can always delete the webhook and make a new one, which is fine. But you should attempt to keep this as secret as possible. Once you have the URL in there, you're going to go to the method here, and you're going to change this to be a post method, as our webhooks work off a of post type. And you're going to take the content type, you're going to change it to application slash JSON. And we'll come back to talking about what this is in a little bit once we actually talk about how we use the webhook within Mixitup. And then finally, we're going to add some ingredients to the body. Now, in the case of IFTTT, ingredients are things that happen within Mixup in that sort of way to actually send information across. So by clicking on Add Ingredient, we can specify what information we want to have in here as far as how things are shown. So, for example, we can have the text that is shown as part of it. So now that we have all this in here, we can click Create Action. And that's going to put all this together here. Then finally, we can click Continue. And then we'll have this set up here so that if a new tweet by my account occurs, then make a web request to the URL we have there. So we're going to click Finish. And that's going to set up the webhook. Now we can verify it's all connected by seeing the connectivity here. And then we can also look at the activity to make sure when things go around, for example. So now that we have all this set up, uh, we're going to go back into Mix It Up to show what happens when some of these actual webhooks trigger. So now that we're back in Mix It Up, well, let's actually make a command to happen when this actually triggers. So how do we get this started? Is by clicking on Add Command first, which is going to generate a new command editor window for us to make our webhook command. So in our command editor, we're going to first start by just naming this. So we'll call this new tweet webhook. We can call whatever we want to, but this is just a name for our own help. And then we can add actions to it, just like any other command to trigger when stuff happens. Now, the problem is you're probably wondering, well, what do I put in here? What do I use? Well, what you can do is use a special, a special identifier to determine what is included in that webhook. Now, in our case, we're including the text, which is going to be the text that's actually passed in for when the tweet's there. But when you're working with some webhooks, you might not know what's going to be included and what information is in there. So a good first place to start off with is to simply just add a chat message action. And in here, we're going to put a special identifier that is default in every webhook. And it's going to be dollar sign webhook payload. And what this is going to be is this is going to return back with everything that's included in the webhook so we can see exactly how it's formatted and what information is in there so once this is all said and done we're going to save this and we're going to try testing out our webhook end to end now i just posted a new tweet on my account to test this end to end you can see here is the test it just says this is a test of webhooks please ignore a little smiley face here's the data it was posted on and if i go take a look at ifttt after having just refreshed the page here you can see it says Applet was ran at 11, September 11th, 5.42 p.m. And then it signifies this is the tweet and this is the information that was there. So now we're going to go back into Mixup and we're going to see what actually happened with that information. So back in Mixitup, if we go over here to the chat tab, we can see here's our command as it runs. This is a test of webhooks, comma, please ignore explanation point with a little smiley face. So what it literally did was just take the entire text of the tweet as we set up an IFTT and just popped array in there with webhook payload. Now, this is a very basic example of something that you could do, but you could add more to this if you want to. Since we know that we have IFTT set up to include the full text, we could either modify the command further to do other things such as, um, you know, when that tweet comes in, maybe we include extra text in the message, maybe we show an overlay action for it or other things or we can modify the IFTTT setup in order to include additional information that wasn't there, such as the username, the date, time, however we want to. But what it shows here is exactly the text that we put in for the body of the webhook is what gets dropped in the webhook payload. So that was a very basic example of how to use webhooks. So let's talk about something that's slightly more advanced as we're actually going to dig into all the features here. So a service that commonly people want to interact with is Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi is a online uh, donation tipping service that you can payment streamers will often use as a means to supplement their income. And you can use webhooks with Ko-Fi to trigger a command when someone tips or donates to you money on Ko-Fi. 
So we'll use this as a slightly more advanced example to show you not only how you can interact with that, but how you can set up specific data to be sent through and used in the command. And just like for the last one, we're going to start off the same way first. We're going to click on Add New Webhook to generate a new webhook for us here. And then we're going to come back to this layer. But for the time being, before we go away, I'm going to click on this Copy URL button to save that URL, and we're going to use it in a little bit when we get to CodePy. So on Ko-Fi, after you've logged in with an account, you can go down to the More section down here. You can click on API to get to this special API page. And this allows you to use webhooks in Ko-Fi to send a command across to trigger something in anything, including mix it up. So that URL that we copied earlier, we're going to paste right into here, just like we did before. And the same thing, we want to ideally try to keep this as secret as possible, but we can put this in here because this will go away. And if you always get like one loose, you can always delete the webhook and re-add it again later. So after you add in here, click on the update button to assign it into here. And now we can actually start taking a look and see what data gets sent across. Now nicely, Ko-Fi has the ability for us to test information out here. So we're just going to work with a single donation right now, which is someone just donating money directly to you on Ko-Fi. Now, when using webhooks, one of the common ways for data to be sent across is in the form of JSON. JSON is a specialized data format that has text values in a key value format. And you can see here is an example of how the data is actually sent across. All this text here is the data in its format. And the way it works is every piece of data has a key that's in a set of quotes, and then there's a colon, and then there's a set of data afterwards usually in quotes, not always, it could be a number, it could be a true false value, or it could be text. But typically this is the pattern for it. It's something in quotes for data, and then something in quotes for the value that's associated with it. So we're gonna dig in here and actually take a look at to see how this data gets sent across over on our end. So back in Mix It Up, we're gonna do the same process we did for the last one. We're gonna go here and click on Add Command. And then we're going to start filling this out with our Ko-Fi information. So we'll start first by just saying, we'll call this Ko-Fi single donation. And then we're going to just, like we saw for the last time, we're just going to add a chat message action and we're going to put webhook payload in here. And that's going to give us the information for what actually is sent down to us from the webhook. So we're going to save this out and we're just going to run a test on the Ko-Fi page to see what happens. So on the Ko-Fi page, I clicked on the single send single donation test button, which sent down a webhook request to us. And you can see webhook payload has a lot different information than we had from the IFTTT one. This has it in that sort of format we saw of key value pairs in JSON. So what I'm going to do just to work with this easy is I'm going to do right click. I'm going to copy message. I'm going to go put this into a text editor to make it a little easier for us to see together and work through what we can get from it. So here's that same data that came out here before that we pulled out from the message in here. And what all I've done here is just take it, put it into a text editor, and I format it in a way so that we can actually see it a little bit easier, visually speaking. Now here's when we were talking about how there's key value pairs that are in this association. Now for here, you're not going to see always in this way, but for the purposes of just going through this, you can see the highlighted colors. All the blue ones here are keys. And then everything after the colon is a value associated with that key. So with the setup of key values, you use a name, and for that name, you get a value associated with it. Now, there's a lot of information here we don't really care about for a Ko-Fi donation, but there's a couple things here that are kind of useful. So for example, we can check to see who it came from. We can check to see the message that was included. And we check to see the amount that was actually given to us. So let's use those three pieces of information to actually build out something of an interesting Ko-Fi um, alert. So we're going to want to take a look at these three names here, from name, message, and amount. We're going to remember those keys and we're going to bring those back into mix it up and associate those to special identifiers for when the command is triggered. So back over here in mix it up, we're going to edit our Ko-Fi single donation command we made before. And we're going to add some additional information that we pulled over from the Ko-Fi donation data that we got. So in our command editor, the first thing we do is we can delete that past chat message that just dumped the entire webhook payload, because we don't need that anymore. And now we're going to use this little button up here you see with the, with the curly braces and the triple dots. This button allows us to set up webhook JSON map pairs. 
which allows us to pair a piece of JSON data, one of these key values here, to a special identifier we can use within the command. So to get started, we're going to click on Add New Pair, and you're going to see two text boxes here. The first one on the left is where you put what we want the JSON value data to pull from. So in this case, it's going to be the key, what's in here in the blue in our little editor for ease. And the one on the right is just going to simply be the name of the special identifier we want to put it into. And that will make a custom special identifier for use just in this command for whatever we want to. Now in our case, the three we want to use are from name, message, and amount. So we're going to use those as our three JSON values, and then we can call the special identifiers whatever we want to. So to get started, we'll do from underscore name, since that's the first one. And we're just going to call this one from, just to keep it a little bit shorter. And then we're going to add the next pair. And the next one we're going to do message. And we'll also call it message. Just one for the same here, just to keep it simple. Because they don't have to be the same name. They can be different if you want, but they can be the same as well too. And then for the last one, we're also going to do amount. And same thing, we'll just call that one amount. So in Mix It Up, we can then use these three special identifiers within our command to do interesting stuff with. So we can close this out. And let's just add a chat message here that's going to use those three in an interesting way for the command. So we could say something like from just tipped dollar sign amount on Ko-Fi. Maybe give a little exclamation point, And then maybe we'll do something like a dash and then we'll say the message that they actually sent with our Ko-Fi command, their Ko-Fi donation. Now, if we save this, we can go back onto Ko-Fi and click the send single donation test button to test this out and see what actually happens. So back in the main mix it up window here, we can open up the hamburger menu, go back up to chat. And I sent that command out earlier for the Ko-Fi just so we could see what it looks like in advance. And after I sent it out, here's the message I got here. Ko-Fi team just tipped three dollars, three. You could put a dollar sign in front if you want to just for as an extra one, but three dollars on Ko-Fi. And the message they sent was good luck with the integration. And what we can do is if we go back and look at that JSON data we have, Ko-Fi team, 3.00 and good luck with the integration were those three values in the test donation. So now we have Ko-Fi integrated with Mix It Up just by using a webhook. And it's very simple and easy to work with. Now this is where we're gonna have specifically end the webhook tutorial at this point because where it really comes down to is figuring out what services support webhooks. There's a lot of online stores or services or programs online that do have webhook integration with them, and then they'll be able to call in to mix up to trigger things, but not all of them do. So it's more than going to be on a per case basis to see if there's something that has webhook support. So our recommendation is if you're not sure, you can always ask us within the mix up support discord and we can try to take a look and see if they have webhook support. And if they do, we can try to help you figure out what things you can do with their webhooks and what data they send across. But the biggest recommendation we give as far as the actual flow to test things out is check to see if your service supports webhooks. You can always ask them in their help support. If they do support it, set up a webhook command and use dollar sign webhook payload to see what it is they actually send across. Then you can then put that into a text editor, see what the key and value sets are, and then you can map the keys you want to special identifiers, just as we did for this last one. And then you can make a command to use them however you like. And with that, we're going to end this tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed the information that was covered in here. We hope you found this useful. Uh, as with always, we want to just thank our Patreon patrons again for helping to sponsor this video for us. And we hope you all have a great rest of your day. And if you have any other questions, make sure to stop into the Mix Up Discord for any help we can provide. Thank you all, and have yourself a good rest of your day. Bye, everybody.